class, welcome to Advantage. I'm Matt Fisher and I'm your accounting instructor today. In today's lecture, we're going over double entry accounting. In double entry accounting, every transaction affects the accounting equation in two ways. You need to make sure you understand how transactions work before you continue with this lecture. If you are still struggling with transactions, you need to go back to the previous two videos and review them. Remember, in accounting, every transaction has at least two things happening. Now we will learn that every transaction has debits that will equal the credits. Accounting is a self-balancing system where debits always equal the credits. Now let's take a look at T-accounts. A T-account is used for analysis purposes by accountants. It's a good visual representation for us to use in order to learn our debits and credits. A T account looks like the letter T. The left side represents the debit side and the right side represents the credit side. You can see this below. You may need to memorize this. Debits to the left and credits to the right. This is critical for you to know. Now, let's look at the accounting equation. Let's look at how debits and credits affect different accounts in the accounting equation. Assets increase with debits, and then the opposite would be true, that they decrease with a credit. I like to remember that assets are on the left side of the accounting equation, so they increase on the left side with a debit. Liabilities, which are on the right side of the accounting equation, increase with a credit. Credits are on the right side of the T account. Liabilities decrease with a debit, Equity overall increases with a credit. Equity is on the right side of the accounting equation and increases on the right side with a credit. Equity will decrease, obviously, with a debit. Let's take a look at the equity accounts in a sole proprietorship or a partnership. The capital account increases with the credit. This makes perfect sense since equity increases with a credit. Withdrawals, on the other hand, increase with a debit. If you think about this, that makes perfect sense. Withdrawals will decrease the equity of the business, so this debit that increases the withdrawal decreases overall equity. Revenue increases with the credit. This also makes sense because revenue increases equity, so this credit increases the equity of the business. The last account is the expense account, and it increases with a debit. The debit has the effect of decreasing equity, but the debit increases the expense account. These are the accounts for a sole proprietorship or a partnership. If this is a partnership, then every partner would have their own capital account and their own withdrawal account. Now, let's look at the equity accounts for a corporation. They're very similar to a sole proprietorship or partnership, but the names are a little different. The common stock account increases with a credit, just like the capital account in a partnership or proprietorship. Common stock is the ownership in the business. The dividend account is similar to a withdrawal, and it increases with a debit. Revenues increase with a credit, just like they did previously, and expenses increase with a debit just like they did previously for partnerships and sole proprietorships. So the only difference here are the common stock and dividend accounts. I do want to mention there may be multiple revenue accounts and multiple expense accounts. This is very common as, as we have multiple sources of revenue and multiple expenses. The business will want to track each revenue and each expense separately. Now that we've seen how debits and credits affect the accounting equation, let's take a look at some of the transactions from previous videos. If you recall transaction number one, the owner invested 50,000 in the business. From a T account perspective, cash would increase 50,000. So you can see in the T account that 50,000 is on the debit side and owner's capital also increases, but it increases with the credit balance. 
So you see the 50,000 on the credit side of the T account. The official way of recording this transaction is through a journal entry. You can see the journal entry at the bottom of the screen. Cash is debited 50,000 and the owner's capital is slightly indented with the 50,000 credit in the credit column. Debits are always recorded first in journal entries and then the credits. You'll recall that owner's capital is for a sole proprietorship. If this had been a corporation, we would have credited common stock instead. The date would be filled in also, and the PR stands for posting reference. We will talk about that in a future video. Transaction two involved buying $4,000 worth of supplies on credit. Supplies are an asset, so we increase it by debiting it 4,000. Accounts payable is a liability and it increases with a credit. The official journal entry would be a debit to supplies for $4,000 and then a credit to accounts payable for $4,000. For transaction number three, the business bought equipment for $10,000. You can see that the cash T account has the $50,000 from a previous transaction and now a 10,000 credit from this transaction. The overall balance then is 40,000 debit balance. The equipment account is an asset and increased with a 10,000 debit entry. The official journal entry is below, debit equipment and credit cash. Debits are always first. Transaction number seven is a partial $3,000 payment on the accounts payable. Accounts payable previously had a 4,000 credit balance. Now we're paying off 3,000, so we have to reduce accounts payable 3,000. This is done by debiting accounts payable, and then we credit cash 3,000. The debit to a liability decreases it, and the credit to an asset decreases the asset. The official journal entry be to debit accounts payable 3,000, and credit cash 3,000. It's critical at this point to mention that debits and credits will be used throughout this course. It's imperative that you understand how to prepare journal entries using debits and credits. You may need to memorize your debits and credits, but eventually you'll need to make sure that you understand how debits and credits affect all the accounts. You need to keep reviewing and practicing the transactions. The following slides have the transactions we have done thus far in previous videos in T account form and in journal entry form. It would be good for you to go through all of these transactions and make sure you understand each one. The next lecture will cover journals, ledgers, the trial balance, and preparing financial statements. I hope this video has helped you out and I hope to see you in future videos.